Hey everyone, I'm Cassie Brevue, and you're not going to want to miss this episode of The AI Show. We are going to be looking at how we can use Llama in Azure. Let's take a look. I am joined today with Swati. Thank you so much for joining us. Why don't you tell us what you do at Microsoft? Hey, Cassie. Thanks for having me. Hey, everyone. I'm Swati Garse. I'm a product manager here in Azure in the Azure AI team. And I am really excited to talk about some of the new capabilities we have in Azure AI. Yeah, so we had some cool announcements last week, and one of them was around the open sourcing of the Llama model and the ability to use it in Azure. That's right. Um, it, it was pretty exciting last week at Inspire when we announced a partnership between Microsoft and Meta, where Microsoft is the preferred partner as Meta makes Llama 2, the next generation of Llama large language model, open source. And today we're super excited about showing everyone how they can use Llama 2 in Azure use, using all the Azure native capabilities we have. And if you're tuning in and you're not really sure what the Llama model is. Let's just go over that super quick. Um, so this is one of the foundational large language models that Meta created. They um, introduced the second version. And if we take a look, there's three different flavors of the model. We have the 7 billion parameter, 13 billion parameter, and the 70 billion parameter. And then from those models, there's different ones that are fine-tuned for um, different text tasks, one being completion, and the other being chat. So obviously, the larger the model, the better the output, the more accurate the output. Um, but then you have to make those considerations um, when you're making your application for size and uh, accuracy, something we're very familiar with in the machine learning world. So Swati, I think you were going to show us how we can actually use this in Azure, right? That's right. That's right. We're super excited to bring uh, all these cool models, you know, the latest uh, state-of-the-art large language models available for you for easy use within Azure. So I'm going to share my screen here. And this is what you see when you come into the Azure AI model catalog. Uh, when, you, when you start out in your Azure AI workspace, you can jump to what we call the model catalog. And the model catalog, you can think of this as a hub for uh, a starting point for all your foundation models, right? You have models from OpenAI, you have all the latest open source models. And the announcement we are here talking about is the latest Llama 2 models from Meta that you can easily get started with from within the model catalog. And Cassie, you just showed us those uh, three different you know, model variants, both of them coming in pre-trained and fine-tuned versions. And we have support for all of these models right here in the model catalog. So let's go ahead and take a look at one of these. So I'm going to get started with the 13 billion model. That is, it's the Llama 2 model, which, is, which has 13 billion parameters. Uh, all of the Llama 2 models, the pre-trained versions, have been trained with, with uh, 2 trillion tokens. And uh, they all, the fine-tuned versions have uh, used over a million human annotations. And all of these are done by Meta using public data. So let's take a look at the 13B pre-trained model. When I jump in here, this is what we call the model card. And this is what you can read to get uh, all the details and about this model. You can find out how the model was trained, uh, any evaluation metrics that will help you decide you know, how good this model is going to be in your own scenario. And uh, if you scroll down, you can see that we also have links to uh, code base samples that we provide in Azure for you to easily use these models as well as any sample input and output for using this model. The other things that you can see up here are the buttons that you see for uh, using the models using the UI in Azure AI. So for example, if you want to decide whether this model is good enough to use in your scenario, you can click on the Evaluate button. And then that lets you pick up in your own test data. And um, it lets you pass in your test data and evaluate this model and get metrics for how this model would do in your own, uh, in your own setting. You could also go ahead and fine tune the model, which is pretty cool because we hear customers tell us that, you know, this model is great, but I need to customize it a little further to work better in my own setting. And so what fine tuning lets you do is pass it your own training data. And uh, it would then, further fine tune this model to do great in your own uh, setting in your you know for your for your own data 
And the really cool thing about all of this fine tuning is that this fine tuning job and all the data that you provided here, like the training data that you provided, it all stays within the context of your Azure AI workspace. And hence, you don't need to worry about this data becoming available to Azure or you know, to anybody else outside of your organization getting access to your training data, which we know is extremely important as people start working with these generative AI models. So this is really cool. So we're in Azure ML. We have all these models available in this catalog. We can use whichever flavor we want. And then we have the tooling built in, like literally click button to fine tune it to different tasks with my data so I can make it more intelligent for my tasks, specifically for the problems that I need to solve. That's right. That's absolutely right. You said it really well, Cassie. It's about fine tuning it and customizing it for your own task. Um, so cool. Yeah. And there's another cool thing I want to show you. Like you might want to deploy this model and you could choose to deploy either uh, the model that we provide in the catalog as is, or you could choose to deploy it after fine tuning. But out here, I'm going to show you what it looks like when you choose to deploy the model from the catalog. So we have two choices available here. You could deploy it to a real-time managed endpoint, or you could uh, you know, deploy it to a batch endpoint where you can give it bulk queries. Let's take a look at the, uh, at the real-time endpoint here. Now, one thing that's really, really cool about our support for Llama 2 models is we have integrated Azure AI content safety by default on all of these uh, deployments. Azure AI content safety is basically Microsoft's additional layer of protection to help you mitigate any harm that could come from the model. So it's, it's really cool because when people use generative AI models, we typically see them use a layered approach to safety. And you can think of this as like your second layer. The first layer is any safety built into the model itself. But this Azure AI content safety that you're seeing, and that's enabled by default when you go ahead and deploy these models, is ensuring that if the model were to provide any kind of harmful content, like if either the inputs or the outputs were, were to have any kind of harmful content, it would filter those out for you, ensuring that you're deploying this model in an extremely responsible manner and you're getting all of the goodness that Microsoft Responsible AI has built in into Azure AI content safety. So that is something really, really cool. It's super important too. We want to make sure that the models are not only performing well for the tasks, but that we're deploying them ethically and with those safety involved. So it's it's having that extra layer um, that is super cool and hard to do as well. So it's just basically built in. That's right. That's right. So I could go ahead. I could proceed. I could say, yes, I do want to use this Azure AI content safety. I mean, why not, right? Like I would definitely want to use any protection Microsoft can offer. And then yeah. this would end up pulling up like a... Um, uh, a notebook that gives you a code-based approach deploying this with Azure AI content safety built in. So this notebook goes through step-by-step -step, um, in Python code, right, to deploy the endpoint. Can we look through it a little bit and just kind of see what those steps look like? Are they pretty standard for any Azure ML endpoint deployment, or is there anything kind of special that's happening that people should be aware of? This is a pretty standard uh, notebook that uses like standard Azure ML capabilities. And you can take a look at the steps. They're fairly self-explanatory. You're setting up like all the requirements before you can you know, deploy this endpoint. You're configuring your workspace. And then further down, you can see where you are actually setting, uh, you know, you're configuring the settings of Azure content safety. Uh, there are four levels of safety, uh, or there's four categories of safety that the Azure, Azure AI content safety looks for. And you can configure the level of moderation you want. So all of that is being uh, configured in here. And then this is where you're actually creating the Azure AI content safety endpoint, right? Let's take a look at an endpoint I've already deployed. And I can go, get into my endpoints. This one here is an endpoint I had deployed using the 13 billion parameter chat model. And if I get into the test interface here, this lets me pass in a sample input and see you know, how the model would respond. So I'm going to go in here and give it some test input. Uh, since this is a chat model, it has a little bit of back and forth in the input data. I am telling it that as a user, I am going to Paris, and I'm asking my chat assistant, what should I see in there, right? And I'm also giving it some standard content uh, and uh, th that the model would give back. And I'm asking it, what is so great about number one? So you can see a little bit about you know, how this is really conversational in a sense that uh, there's this chat going back and forth where it's telling me uh, Paris is the capital of France and there's the Eiffel Tower and the Louvre and the Notre Dame. And I'm really asking it what's so great about number one. 
And let's see how the model does when I give it that. Excellent. And right here, you can see the model has given us an excellent answer. It, under, it understood that I was asking about the first suggestion, and it starts telling me about you know, all the things that are unique about the Eiffel Tower and why, as a visitor, I should care and go visit. So I have a question on that. So I see you have two different content blocks, and that's basically the, the information where that you're sending it in about Paris. Is that, would that be something that they would have got from the model when asking, and then we're sending in that additional information to get more information on that? Or is that you giving the model um, information to kind of ground its answers? Yeah, it's like me giving the model some context about my question. Okay. And getting getting the model to give me a response because most chat is not like, you know, one off questions and answers, right? There's context and there's back and forth. So in the input, you can see everything I've given in the input is what me as a user is chatting with the model and giving it context about my question. And then the result is what the model gave me based on my question and the context that I provided it. And then out here are the additional parameters I can configure to kind of tweak the answers it gives me. And then the limitation here would just be the amount of tokens, right? I could have as many input output um, sections in there for additional context and conversational right. going right. until right. I hit that max token limit. That's right. That's and, cool. So we saw how we're able to grab the model from the model catalog. It's already there. We have this deployment, the code's there for us. We set it up, we get an endpoint in Azure ML. And now that endpoint is what we can then use in our applications or in ProfFlow, like we're gonna take a look at. So I'm gonna share my screen now, and we are going to take a look at how we can leverage the endpoint that we created in ProfFlow. So here is the ProfFlow that I've already created, and I'm gonna kind of walk through what's happening here and how it all comes together in Azure ML with the ProfFlow tool. So obviously we need input, so we're gonna ask it a question. And this particular um, scenario is around an HLP manufacturing, um, like retail uh, scenario where they're gonna ask questions about the product. And what we wanna do is we wanna be able to add grounded truth about the product. So we wanna retrieve uh, documentation from our um, cognitive search uh, database that is going to be able to add in that breadth and information into our prompt. And then we also want to have customer specific information. So we're gonna use our Cosmos database and we're gonna be able to call that. So if you see in the first part here, we have our customer ID. So we're able to make that call out to get that information. And then we just have a default question. So the first thing we're gonna do is the question embedding. And this is to get our text input. And then we're gonna create the embedding output, which we're gonna send to our cognitive search database. Um, the other thing that we're doing here is we are going to be doing that customer lookup. Like I said, we have a Cosmos database that we want to look up customer information. And so if you take a look at how these work, um, you can see that we're sending in that customer ID. We have this connection here. So this is the connection that we've set up um, to call that database. And you can even take a look at the output and see what we're getting back um, based on this customer ID. So we're able to see the different orders and information that we want to add. Now, how you get these different connections into PromptFlow, let me show you that quickly. I'm gonna open up a new tab here. And within PromptFlow, we have these connections. And these are really basic um, key value pairs that you can connect different assets that you wanna use within the flow. So for example, we had the Llama completion one. This is the endpoint that we created um, earlier. And then we're adding that as connection so we can call it from our workflow. We're using the Cosmos connection here. This one is um, call, calling out to that. So these are how we create the different connections that we need in order to call out for different data or different endpoints within the workflow itself. So just to kind of put in that context of where these connections are coming from and how we get that all connected within PromptFlow. So we look up our customer. We um, are then calling out to our Cosmos database. We got our question embedding, and then we are going to be using our search endpoint. Again, another connection that we've created. One thing that I think is super interesting about the question embedding is you'll look and we um, are using an OpenAI endpoint, which is also a connection here, uh, in order to create that vector embedding in order for our search. Um, the way that cognitive search works is when you chunk in your your uh, your documents and your and your data into it, it you choose a model that um, will do the embedding for you. And so we're going to be using that same embedding for our question that we did when we created our vector database with cognitive search. 
We're going to be doing a more in-depth show on cognitive search. So if that stuff interests you, uh, be sure to tune in. And I think a couple weeks is when that one will be up. So then once we have that, we're retrieving the documentation. Again, you can see here the different outputs in order to add that grounding data that we need um, to add into the model, to add into our prompt. Uh, any additional chat history can be sent in, and then we're creating the prompt itself. So when you look at the prompt itself, putting together the input that we need based on all of these things that we've ran already, which is going to create the prompt for the LLAMA model. And you can see what that output looks like as well. Once we have that ready, then we're going to be sending that into the LLAMA model itself. So here you can see this is just Python code in um, this tool widget in our workflow. And we can go through here and we can see the um, connection. Again, so I showed you we had that LLAMA connection where we created our endpoint from the model catalog. Now we're able to just call that and get our response, parse the response, and print it to the output. So that's high level, step by step, how we're going through and putting this all together. So let's take a look at how that works. So in order to test this, I'm going to click chat. And then I'm going to ask it a question about the HomeKit Max Charge adapter. So now this is going to go through each of those steps that we just saw. It's going to get my customer information. It's going to create that embedding. It's going to get the uh, grounding information from our uh, cognitive search database. It's going to generate that prompt. It's going to send the prompt into the Llama model, the endpoint that we created. We're going to get back the result, and it's going to show it here. And there you go. So then once you deploy this, it creates an endpoint, and you can then leverage that endpoint in your application. OK, so we went over a lot. We went over how you can leverage the models in the Azure Machine Learning Catalog, create those endpoints, um, fine tune them, deploy them, and then use prompt flow to create your um, endpoint that you can use in your application by leveraging uh, these large language models. So. Super cool, lots of potential. I can't wait to see what people start to build with this. Where can they go to learn more? Yeah, that's that's absolutely right. I mean, the goodness of this is the cool stuff that people are gonna build with Llama 2 and with Azure capabilities. They can read all about this in a blog post that we have. Uh, and we also have documentation that calls out how they can use foundation models in Azure and you know talks about everything in the model catalog. So there's lots of cool resources for people to learn more and get started. We can't wait to see what people are going to build with Lava 2 on Azure. Awesome. I shared those links there. They'll also be available in the description. Thank you so much for hanging out with us today. Thank you.